All right, so for uh, today, what I would like to accomplish is, as we've got in the syllabus, uh, I want to talk about uh, Google Plus, setting it up and using it. In short, Google Plus is Google's social network. Uh, there are many other social networks out there. What's another big famous social network people might have heard about? <laughs> Facebook. Facebook. Great. Any other ones? Twitter. Twitter. Any other ones? Peach. Peach. Any other ones? Instagram. Instagram. We can name dozens of them, literally. I can pull up a, a website on Wikipedia with like a hundred social networks that you've never heard of. So Google has their own social network as well, Google+. Plus. The reason that they created it is they saw Facebook. Lots of people use Facebook. They use it all day long. They stay in Facebook, they create content, they, they look at stuff, they use Facebook all day long. And it's building and building and building an audience. A couple of weeks ago, uh, Facebook released some of their latest numbers and they've got about 1.59 billion users now. Almost 1.6 billion users. The population of the Earth is about 7 billion. So that means one and a half in seven of the world uses Facebook to some degree. So Google saw that and they said, well, that's taking out a lot of our traffic away. If people are spending a lot of time on Facebook, perhaps they're spending less time on Google. How can we capture more of those views? We'll make our own social network. So in 2011, Google made their own social network. And unfortunately, it's a failure. Just like Twitter's a failure, Instagram's a failure, Peach is a failure, Snapchat's a failure, everything's a failure compared to Facebook. <laughs> Facebook with 1.59 billion users is the king, the top of all social networks in traffic and influence and such. So the reason I say that is because I often have people when I teach about Google Plus in my various classes, I teach a little and then they say, well, isn't Google Plus dead? I keep hearing that it's like no one uses it. And that's why I head that off right away by saying, yes, it's a failure, just like everything else. Nothing is Facebook. Nothing is going to catch up to Facebook, for better or for worse. But I'm going to tell you then, furthermore, Google Plus is not a failure. It's very valuable. As I said, I teach this stuff for a living. I get paid by real companies throughout San Diego to do social media for them, to make a good website, to, uh, to get traffic and build SEO uh, positivity for them. And Google Plus works really well. So yes, small sample size. Anecdotally, I can tell you Google Plus is good. Uh, and I'll show you concrete examples. If you open up your web browser, and we'll go to google.com, We'll do a quick Google search here for any kind of topic, but let's say I'll choose uh, web designers in San Diego or whatever. I'll, I'll search for something on Google. I get lots of results, of course. But you might have been noticing on Google that, that, that now there's a section on some Google search results that looks like this. A nice map, driving directions, ratings, in addition to the classic results. Now, just first impression. Would you rather click on one of these results here or one of these results here? Probably, possibly, you're thinking of maybe one of these. Possibly because star ratings. We're getting more used more and more used to reviews and ratings and things. Yelp is the king of ratings uh, for good and for bad. Uh, companies can live and die by Yelp. Lots of bad Yelp reviews. Possibly then that's going to affect business and the business shuts down. Possibly a lot of good Yelp reviews that'll build upon itself and give you more traffic. Well, these are not Yelp reviews. These are reviews coming from Google. Google's version of Yelp, Google Local. And so, oh, what a coincidence. Google is showing preference to its own stuff as opposed to Yelp, as opposed to Facebook, as opposed to the competition. So if we know that, it behooves us then to get educated as much as possible on what are the tricks that we can use on Google to beat the competition, to beat your competition because you may not be the only web designer in town. According to Google, I've got 8 million results in San Diego. That doesn't mean you've got 8 million competitors, but 
8 million results if you're a web designer. And as I said, my company, we do this stuff too, so we're the needle in the haystack as well here. But Google is starting to show preference for this, for this to show a location on a map and star ratings and look at that, it's tied into are they open or closed, directions, all of that. And the secret to get that is to create a Google Plus business page. If your competitor doesn't have that, your competitor will have this result, tinyfrog.com. <laughs> and so dogandrooster.com. They're down there, but we've got Stormbrain Designs, Bop Designs, San Diego Website Design. They are placed right here, the three quote-unquote best ones, simply just because of placement. But they are getting a lot more of like free advertising. They're getting a leg up over these guys down here. And notice you don't have to be a huge superstar to be featured here. Bop Design has got eight ratings, whereas Storm has the S35. No reviews for San Diego website design, but they're still here in the top three. You can go to more places and see the rest, but all of these people here have a presence on Google, have a, have a location set up on Google. Oh, I see here, Tiny Frog is out here, but notice it's also an ad. What I'm getting at is that this is the Google Plus page. This is the point of the Google Plus page. Um, it's very valuable because Google is going to prefer to show its own properties rather than the competition, which you may say, well, that sounds monopolistic. Yes, but that's for the courts to decide, and we know how slow they are. So might as well take advantage of the current situation, which is we need a Google Plus page for our business. So let me confirm with the class. How far did you guys get with Google Plus last time? Did you create a page, at least? Uh, she was trying to do that towards the end. Um, so some people might have done it, some people haven't. One thing she brought up is whether or not you, if you work at home, whether or not you want to add an address. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know that you could uh, provide on that as an alternative, or do you have to provide some location? Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Okay, so we will go through the process then in general about creating it, and I will say on that you can create a Google Plus business page that has a location or not. So we'll see how we can do that. So what I'm going to say here then is, let me ask the class then, how many of you currently have a Gmail email address? Uh, a few of you, okay. So the easiest way to do this is we'll use your existing Gmail address to create this. The question always comes up, should I use my personal Gmail address? or should I use a business Gmail address? It's up to you. Either or will work. What you can do is, like for myself personally, I use my personal Gmail address to create the Google Plus Business pages for a variety of clients. I can use one Gmail to create many business pages on Google Plus. My name is not attached, my name is not visible, that I'm the manager or the controller of all of those pages. I can make that private, so I myself part of my business. Uh, if I create someone's profile here, um, I can do that for several people and I can manage it or anyone else on my team, anyone can, can do this. So for you, you need to decide, do you want to use your personal Gmail? Do you want to use a business one? Do you want to create one? It's totally up to you how you want to do it. The way I will do it is simply I'm going to log in with my personal Gmail and then I'll show you what to do to add more business pages to that. Let's go to the address plus.google.com. Plus.google.com. We'll set this up in just a moment, but here's one of the login pages for Google Plus. We have various things that we can do and see in Google Plus. And here, Google Plus is just giving a sort of a a, uh, a preview of one of its aspects. It has the local business sort of thing, it has the, the, the business listing aspect, but it also is a marketing platform. Google Plus is a marketing platform. Uh, what that would mean is that it's some kind of way to reach an audience, uh, to put out uh, ads, so to speak, about your product, to reach a, an audience, to build awareness for your company, your brand, 
whatever you have online, it's a marketing tool, it's a social network. So whatever I talk about in this class, I'm usually going to be talking about business or product or brand and such. But whatever I talk about um, still applies to whatever you do online. Let's say you are learning this stuff to become a web designer to get hired for this. Great, this stuff still applies. Let's say you're, a, you're in a band and you need to book more gigs. Great, this stuff still applies. Let's say you're an artist or a realtor or a baker or a dog walker, you need more business. All of this still applies, but I'm just going to generically say business and company and brand. But it applies for all your endeavors online. And we're going to see that we can use Google Plus to get attention. Maybe I'm an Android developer. Maybe I'm a Chicago restaurant. Maybe I'm about art. Uh, maybe I want to share about culture of Pakistan. So I can create content on Google Plus to find an audience to market to. That's the big secret about any social media. You use it as a tool to build an audience, a captive audience. Because that billboard that's out on the street is old school social media. They put it out there, people look at it, maybe you know talk about it, friends and family, and a lot of people ignore it, but some people look at that billboard and actually pick up the phone and call that lawyer. I need a lawyer. I saw the billboard. So I, I hired them. To a degree, we have that in social media. We have that in Google+, Plus, in Twitter, Snapchat, whatever. We put out stuff on the network, and then when someone needs that lawyer or, or that app to be built or that artist to hire, you have built an audience online to hopefully land you that, that job, uh, donations, or whatever you're trying to do online. So we'll talk about collections in detail later. Uh, but Let's look at this. At the top, we're in Google+, and we've got search. This is going to search inside of Google+. This is, not the, this is not the plain old Google search, which searches all over the world for everything. This is searching inside of Google+. Let's try this. Here in Google+, <coughs> search, again like you did over on Google search. Search here uh, a keyword, a topic or something. I'll search web designers again. Web Designers, San Diego, just press enter. Keywords and then press enter. You're going to see content that appears on Google+. This is only going to show you content in Google+. It's not like a regular search that it could show you a result from Yelp or Facebook or Twitter or Google. This is just in Google+. And what I'm seeing here is suggestions about communities collections. Uh, you might see collections, you might see communities, people and pages, and posts. This is content that is being created on Google+. We'll see the value of communities and collections as we go on. But think about it like this. Maybe all of these people right here are web designers in San Diego, and someone's looking to hire a web designer in San Diego. They got displayed here. So what I'm getting at is people use Google+. Plus. It doesn't have the 1 in 1.6 billion users. It has a statistics range. Google doesn't give the exact value, unfortunately. Statistics change from, range from about, from about 300 million to 600 million. So kind of a huge range. But 300 to 600 million or so people use Google+. Plus. Again, failure, because they don't have a 1.59 billion users. But even 300 million users is a lot of potential customers that you could reach. That is global, of course. But what I'm saying is that there's a lot of people that use Google Plus. So all of those, once in a while you hear those, you read, you see those articles being passed around that it says Google Plus is dead. It's a ghost town. Well, yeah, you're reading it on Facebook. Of course, it's going to say that. You're reading that on Twitter. Of course, it's going to say that. But I've been using Google Plus since like the beginning, 2011, and I really like it, and I get a lot of results personally and professionally out of it. In any event here then, to actually use it, on the top right corner let's click sign in. It'll ask you for your email and again, either create one just for this, uh, just for this business, or use a personal Gmail or a business Gmail, doesn't matter. 
So I'm going to log in with my account. So uh, again, if anyone is having any trouble at any point, let me know and I'll help you out. But you should all uh, have been able, hopefully, to log in or uh, create an account. Um, what we're going to do is, when you when you sign in, depending, this is always a little bit of a stumbling block, depending on the size of the class. Everyone might have a different sort of screen, because some of you might have already set up Google+. Plus on purpose or on accident. Some of you would be there first time, so if your screen doesn't look exactly like mine, just let me know and, and I'll help you out. You might get a screen that says something like Upgrade to Google+. Plus. Uh, you can ignore that for the moment, because I've got an account here that I've already set this up before. It might look a little different, but here's how we can all get on the same on the same page. After you've signed in, my name's right there, after you sign in, you go to the address business.google.com business.google.com You might get some pop-ups that tell you how to navigate around. You can take a quick read, but I'll explain it, of course. And if you go to that page, you might see right away this is another spot where it might be different for people. Uh, you might, as soon as you went to business.google, it might have shown you a map. How many saw a map as soon as you got here? If you did, that's fine. If you did or didn't, what I'm getting at is it might be different for, pe for different people. But when I went to business.google.com, in my case, it showed me here are two businesses, business pages that you are managing. In this case, these two are businesses on Google Plus that don't have a physical location. And Google differentiates them as brand pages. I've got a tab also that says locations. So this would be then my screen where it shows businesses on Google Plus that have a physical location. That someone can type in your address and find you on Google search to drive. Yes? Can we add uh, features or uh, various things to this Google Plus? Does it go live immediately when we enter that? Or is it like to create it and then launch it? Or, or it's uh, it's pretty live actually. As soon as you make some changes and such, it, it just changes pretty much right away. There isn't sort of like save draft, unfortunately. It just kind of goes live for most things. It would, it would be nice if there's an option just to not make it live because I'm not ready. <laughs> so here's what I would suggest. We're going to talk about creating something here. I would suggest just create a test business, a completely fake test business to learn this stuff. Once you've got it down, then apply it to your real business because we can create and delete as many business pages as we want. I would suggest just play with this testing account as I'll show you how, learn that, and then delete it later. So we've got lo lo locations and brands. Either of these you can decide to use, and like I said, I'm going to do this from scratch as if I'm creating a brand new page. I've got a few, of course, here already, but I'm going to create one from the beginning to show you what that looks like, and I recommend for the class, create a testing one, and we can delete it. It won't matter what we do with it. We'll delete it at the end of the day if you'd like, or you can keep it. But what we've got from this screen, business.google, here's where we manage our pages. Um, do you see at the top left corner uh, this menu, this three-line menu? At the top left, click that. 
in my case it just says this is Google My Business, uh, add a brand page, all locations, create a business account. Again, yours might be a little different. Mine says add a brand page, all locations. Um, and you also see support. Uh, nowadays you don't see this a lot with a social network. How do I contact someone for real, not just through some sort of uh, dead-end contact form? There is, if you go into support here, you don't have to, but if I click on support, it'll give me some quick tips, but then there's here, contact us via phone. You can contact someone in real time, just about 24 hours a day, to get some help on Google Plus for your business, because Google thinks, okay, this is someone that's got a business on Google, this is very important to them, we want to answer the question right away, as opposed to the person that uses Google Plus simply for fun, and that's kind of a little harder to get help for. And I've used this. I've uh, dealt with a client, we were at his shop at 11 p.m., we were having trouble with, with a Google Plus aspect that I couldn't figure out. We clicked here and set up a phone call, and they called us. They called us like two minutes later, and then they figured it out from their end. So it does it does work. It's also live chat, but I, I don't know what the t what the time is for that. The phone call worked just fine. Yes. Uh, I don't have uh, create a business account on my uh, sidebar. Let me take a quick look. It doesn't matter at the moment exactly. Uh, and sometimes that's a misnomer. But let's see what yours looks like. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine how yours is like that too. Some of you might <coughs> might not have that exactly, in. and that's okay if it doesn't because we're not going to use that anyway. From your menu, uh, everyone should at least have hopefully add brand page or add location. So here you have to decide if you're creating this as a test account. It doesn't really matter which of the two you choose, but I'm going to recommend to select Add a Brand Page. It'll ask you to create a Google Plus page with a page name, your website, type of page. Uh, page name, so I usually have this fictional business I do in all of my classes, Victor's Bakery. I'm going to put the name of my business there. You can use spaces, capital letters, all of that, symbols, you know, exclamation points and whatever. You can put emoji there, you know, smiley faces and all of that stuff if you want. This is a little bit also to think about of SEO, search engine optimization. We'll touch on those concepts throughout the course, but I teach a class in much more detail about that four week or five-week course on search engine optimization, all the details of it. And part of the secret of SEO is that you're always thinking in terms of keywords. What are the keywords that people might be searching for on Google or Bing or Yahoo or whatever? A little while ago on Google I searched for web designers in San Diego and it pulled up a bunch of results. Not my company's website, but a bunch of results. So if we think in terms about filling out our profile and creating content, sharing content on Google Plus with these keywords that goes toward helping us get found. Yes? Would you, for page name, then would you use, uh, rather than a business name, would you use a, the product name that you're dealing with, for example? Um, uh, not not exactly. Let's say in Victor's Bakery I sell like the, the world's best pecan pie. Yeah. I wouldn't really type here, world's best pecan pie. I would type the name of the business and say something like uh, originators of the world's best pecan pie. Perhaps put that keyword in there in addition to my business. It's a little bit of, to some degree, false advertising to only put this, only put keywords here. You want really your business. Because somewhere technically in here, in the terms of service, it tells you that stuff about not misrepresenting yourself on Google Plus. So I'd be fine with putting Victor's Bakery, originators. What's a better word than originators? Origi originators of the pecan pie. Authors, originators, creators, whatever word. I could do that. I won't put a huge sentence there, however. This is one of the many pieces of the puzzle of SEO. 
but always think in terms about keywords or phrases that people might be searching for, that people might be interested in, and therefore your business, your website could show up when people search. Yes. Can you do multiple dashes then? Say you had originators, originators of pecan pie dash best apple pie in town or something like that? You could, but I don't recommend it. At that point, you're getting into, into what I'm saying, that now you're, you're, you're writing too much. You're, you don't need to write a lot here because what will have more weight is what we actually share and post. The picture of that best pie or that article or video about that pecan pie. So this is just one of the pieces. We shouldn't overdo it too much. Th that's fine right there. And even just the name of the business, that's totally fine too because of the content we will create in a moment that will help us more. If you have a website, you can put it here. This is optional, actually. So if you don't have a website, you don't have to put it. But I would recommend, if you've got a website, you do want to put this here. Because the thing about pretty much all social networks at the moment, to various degrees, is that they are great as a marketing tool, but usually they're not that good as a selling tool. The difference there is that usually you really don't have a button on your Twitter that says, buy now. You don't have a button that you can put your credit card in at that moment. You don't have a way on Instagram, I really like that, I want to buy it right now. You don't have really a direct way to buy something on the network, although I do see that Facebook is starting to make that active. I need to educate myself more on that, it's very new, but it seems that perhaps on Facebook you're going to be able to start selling stuff. Well, all along it was that you don't really sell your product, you don't really get that donation, you don't really book your gig. You know, you don't really do the thing you need to do on your network. You advertise it, but then you always lead people back to your website. On your website is where you can sh set up the shopping cart, the donate button, the subscribe button, the, you know, book a table button. On your website is where you can have people complete the goal of your business on your social network is just a way to advertise just like that billboard on the street you don't actually buy anything from the billboard you go to the business you call the business and you complete the goal there that billboard was just advertising type of page there's not a lot to choose from but choose anyone that makes sense and there's really no wrong answer here if none of these quite make sense for your business you can select other probably product or brand is what you'll choose. There's the terms of service, which if you ever have the time, you can go read it. It's kind of lengthy. What is it about? What you can do? What you cannot do? You may choose any name of your page so long it complies with the content policies. Once you have selected a page name, you may change it up to three times in a calendar year. Once your page has a significant number of followers, no longer we no longer allow a name change. What does significant mean? I wish it would tell us. But that's saying once you've got, I don't know, a thousand followers, you can't become another business name on Google Plus. Suspension and termination and all of that. So that is valuable to read. I haven't read it in a while, but uh, I might, I should. Everyone should agree to that. If not, can't really use it. Create page. Now, you might also then get uh, this screen to verify by a text or voicemail or some other method of verification. Um, I've uh, used this test account several times, so I'll see if it lets me verify it or not. It might not let me, but that's okay. Uh, you may or may not have gotten this screen, so if you didn't, just wait for me to catch up with you. If you did get this screen, I would verify. The point of this is to try to prevent spam. Yes? I got a, a welcome to Google My Business uh, skip tour or get started. Just skip skip the tour for the moment, and then when I get there, we'll, we'll go on. Let's see if it lets me verify, because I have used this a lot.
All right, so in my case, it verified. And my page is there. It took me back to this screen, business.google.com. Let's all confirm. Anyone need any help? Anyone need help with this setup process so far? All right, so if you're on this screen, we have view page, manage page. Let's click on uh, manage page. This takes you to an aspect of Google Plus where you manage the basic behind the scenes aspect of your Google Plus page. That's different than the view page. View page is what people will see. Manage page is what only you see as the manager. From this screen, I see Home and Insights tabs. The Home tab is this screen where I can edit these various aspects of my business, like a, an introduction here, put a tagline, and so forth. Uh, that's something that you can do later if you go over to to edit. Don't worry about it at the moment. Uh, but this is how you can put in your company logo, do a little branding so that you have your unique presence on Google+. Plus. You can do that later, but this is under the home screen. Um, it's going to suggest to you about um, reach the right people at the right time, and this is all about their... Uh, Google AdSense, which we're not really going to cover in this class. That's another uh, kettle of fish. That one is uh, Google AdSense is basically paying for more traffic to your site, which is good and bad. But we're not really going to talk about that. We've got insights, a screen of insights that will tell you your stats, your data within the last 30 days. How many views did your page get on Google Plus? Actions, new followers, all of that. So followers are very valuable in social media. They're not only a great ego boost, but they are that captive audience that, I, that I'm talking about, that captive audience that you're sharing something and someone could follow through. Let's say I share a, a, a picture of one of my products on Google Plus and a link that says, buy it now. They click that link, it goes back to their website. And so the more followers I have, the more potential customers, the more potential customers could see my my posts and follow through. The big tragedy of social media is that it's not a one-to-one -one result, meaning I post something and that doesn't mean that all my 10 followers are gonna buy the product, or 20, or 50, or 100 followers, or 10,000 followers. It's gonna be a very low number, just like in the real world. That radio ad that 5,000 people here in San Diego every day, maybe a hundred actually call, maybe a thousand call. But out of all of those people that heard that ad or saw that ad on TV or in various ways were exposed to some ad, a very small percentage of people follow through. Same thing with social media. Just because you've got 10,000 followers doesn't mean you're going to make 10,000 sales. Maybe you'll make 10. And that sounds horrible, but 10 sales is better than zero sales, isn't it? The more followers you get, the more possibility of getting those that follow through. And what I like to do is talk about the 1% the rule of marketing in that 1% of your followers usually are the most, are the most ardent, are the most serious. 1% of your followers are usually the ones that are really going to follow through, really buy your product, really hire you, really reach out to you. That's a very small number. It's very conservative. Your particular brand or company or product might be amazing. It might be more like 25% results, 50% results, 90%. I don't know. But think in terms of about 1% of my results, of my followers. So if I've got 100 followers, what's 1% 1 of 100? One. One follower out of 100 followers is the one that's really going to buy. And again, that sounds very low, but that's a good starting point, a good way to think. So that's why I need more followers. I need 500 followers. I need 1,000 followers. And eventually, perhaps you're, you're getting that number up higher, but don't be surprised if you have a 
result rate. It's very common. All of these stats will show up here once we've got something to show for it. Uh, the actual, what do people see? We'll see that in a bit with the actual Google Plus page. And we can then connect this with Google Analytics to get even more data. We'll talk about Google Analytics next time. But we can connect your Google Plus with Google Analytics to get even more data. The Insights tab is just showing you in detail again what have you done on Google Plus and how has it worked. If you click the menu, the three line menu at the top left, you should have various other buttons there Home, Insights, Google Plus page, and then the other ones here Add another page or location, managers, settings. Uh, you can look at it later, but under Managers is where you would go to add more people to edit this Google Plus page. Let's say I've got Victor's Bakery and I've got two other people in my business that also want to help me with it. So I can add them as managers so that they can post a picture, reply to a comment, delete a bad comment, a bad reply. So I can add more managers there. And that will not be public by default unless you want it to be. So like I said, on mine, on my personal Gmail, I'm managing like seven other businesses, Google Plus pages, but my name doesn't show up on their businesses unless I, unless I make it explicitly show up. So you can manage multiple accounts, multiple businesses with one Gmail. Or multiple people can manage one business page. Let's go ahead then from the menu, click Google Plus, Google Plus page. Google Plus recently changed their interface. They've had roughly the same sort of design since around 2011. But recently they changed their interface to make it look a little bit more like their Android operating system. So their Android phones. Google owns Android phone, Google owns Google Plus, Google owns Gmail, Google owns YouTube. And so Google is trying to put everything consolidated into one design. And it's coming now into Google Plus. So eventually the old design is going to go away. If, if yours is already in the new design, I'll tell you how to tell it apart. But I've got this one that is still in the old design, and it's saying, why not try out the new one? And I would recommend to go to the new one. Personally, I don't like the new design as much as the old design. I think that always happens. But um, I would still go with the new design, learn how it works, and, and enjoy it, because eventually the old design is going to go away. So if anywhere on screen it tells you, try the new Google+, Plus, upgrade to it, or whatever, I would... I would say yes, or click OK, or let's go, or whatever it tells you. And then you'll get more of a design that is like a like flat colors. That's what the new Google Plus looks like. Well, if you didn't see it, it might be on a different screen. I'll see yours in just one moment. Sometimes it pops up right away, or it doesn't. Uh, but if you did get this design, then I'm going to click this back arrow just so that it shows us like this. This is the new Google Plus flat design. So let's all get on that screen so we're all looking at the same thing. Yep, that's exactly it. Click let's go and make the photo that's going Oh, okay, great. Oh, we didn't even help at this point. We're all on the page. All right, so um, I use my Gmail account to create my businesses page. And my personal Gmail can have a Google Plus and my business can have a Google Plus, and I can create multiple businesses all attached to the same Gmail. 
the way we keep track of which account am I using is on the top right corner. I haven't fully set up my account yet. I haven't put my logo, my company logo and such. So it's just showing me the initial of my business. But on the top right corner, it'll show you which account you're working with. Ooh, uh, Victor's Bakery. If you click your icon on the top right, it'll tell you you're using Victor's Bakery. It's your Google Plus page. And then here's these other ones. Here's these other Google Plus pages that I'm working with. So to switch between them, I would just click on one and then switch between. If you don't have any more than one, you probably just have two, the business page and the, and the email, the personal email address. But you use that to switch back and forth because when you go home after, you, after today's lesson and you're very excited to use it and then you go do it at home and you log in and it doesn't look like what we did in class, that's because usually when you log in it'll take you right away to your personal Gmail, Google Plus. You'll have to remember to switch. As soon as you log in, switch over on the top right corner between accounts. Or when you sign in, remember we can go to business.google.com and switch to the business. And so what we get what we get from uh, Google Plus is a social network in the vein of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest and all of these and that they have various actions that are similar throughout every network and therefore many of the actions that we would do on one network we do with another with variation and the goal of all of these social networks is to build followers so that I have a captive audience to market to, to uh, try to promote something, our business, our brand, our nonprofit, our art, whatever. Let's say I'm, I'm a blogger. Let's say I want to write articles about finance. I have a lot of great finance experience and I want to share that. So I'm going to create a great WordPress website and I've been doing it for a few months and I don't have any traffic. No one knows I exist. That's where the social network comes in. That's where it pays to use something like Google Plus to share. Hey everyone, I just wrote a new article about the best uh, ETFs. Share it and that could get me traffic back to read my blog. I'm not going to share the whole 500 word blog in Google Plus. I'm going to share a snippet of it to get people to go back to my blog. So we'll talk about this stuff in detail, but again, the point of all this social networking is some form of marketing, some form of advertising for your website, your brand, your blog, your product, your nonprofit, whatever. We're going to get around in Google Plus by learning a little bit of the anatomy of Google Plus. Again, uh, if you don't have the flat color red bar at the top, you're not in the new Google Plus look around somewhere maybe in the corner it says try the new Google Plus notice it says go back to the classic if you're in the new one again they're in the new one because they're going to take away the classic one eventually and from this menu I have at the top left a three line menu which just shows and hides that side bar I have the Google Plus icon which just takes you back to the home screen home screen home screen, search, to search inside of Google Plus. On the top right corner I've got these, these nine dots, these are the Google Apps. There it shows, go look at your business listing, or your insights, or your Google Plus page, or your YouTube, you get a free YouTube with this. The thing uh, that we'll be covering eventually is YouTube. So what's so valuable about YouTube? So, mm -hmm. Are you just saying that when you set up a Google fan page, you get a separate YouTube account that goes with it? Basically, yes. You get a YouTube page attached to it, which you can use either or, or both. All right, so 
Next to that, I see a little bell. These are your notifications. Every network has some feature that lets you know what has happened, what, what, what has happened on your page, on your posts, etc. Some notification. If you've used Facebook, you're familiar with on the top right corner, it's got the little icons. One icon is someone sent you a message, another one is you got a friend request, whatever. All those icons up there, notifications on Facebook. On Google+, Plus, they're all consolidated into one screen under that bell. Those are the notifications that will tell you someone replied to your comment, someone followed you, uh, someone liked your picture. So all of those actions, you will be notified of them right there. That will become a number. 2, 3, 9, 50. It'll tell you how many notifications, all of them together. Likes, follows, etc. They're all consolidated here. And then you've got your, uh, your account icon on the top right corner to switch between accounts and to go look at settings. That's what you get at the top bar of Google Plus. On the left bar, if you don't see the left bar, you might have hidden it, that menu there. But on the left bar, you get home. And every network has some form of, of a home screen. On Facebook, they used to call it the wall. Now it's the timeline. Twitter's got a timeline. Google's got a timeline. They call it home. The home screen is basically where you see the latest, the latest uh, posts, the latest content on Google+. Plus, The latest content of who you have followed, we'll talk about following, followers, all of that stuff later, uh, but this is where you see the latest that's happening on Google+. Plus. Everything that you've posted, what other people have posted, it's here on the home screen. We'll look at, yes? Uh, the upper right hand corner where you choose the profile that you're using. One could be personal, one could be business. Yes. Using different email addresses or the same email address? Either or, but I've got it set up and I think the easiest way is using the same email address. I've got my personal email address and I use it for my personal and my business just to have one less thing to worry about. But you can keep, you can separate them if you'd like. On the left menu, we have collections and communities. We'll look at those soon. We've got profile and people. Click on profile. This is what your Google Plus page looks like to the world. If someone searched for bakery or bakeries, and maybe they'll find you, or maybe someone searched for Victor's Bakery on Google Plus, they might find you, and then they'd see this. Basically nothing. Nothing meaningful, nothing useful for someone. So there's very little there's very little enticement there to follow. Let me show you like this. If, if I search up on the top, PMD Interactive, the name of my company, and it goes over to my company's page, you see posts, you see pictures, you see content, comments, replies, all of that stuff, and a follow button. So the paradox always with social media is, do I want to try to build followers as soon as I can? Or do I want to share content first? If I share content first, I have no followers, no one seeing it, I might feel I'm wasting my time. But if I try to build followers first, and someone visits my homepage with nothing, why would they follow me? So I would say, and what I do for clients is, my business creates content first. We have no followers. That's okay. We're going to create content first to then entice people to follow us, to show something for their efforts. If someone comes to Victor's Bakery, there's nothing here to entice a follow. Someone goes to PMD Interactive, plenty of great stuff to incite a follow. Basically, I'm telling you guys, follow me on Google+. Plus. But uh, here, once there's content on Google+, Plus, there would be more of an incitement to follow. So we will do that. We will create content first. We don't, we don't have any, any followers. No one's paying attention. That's OK. That's how you break that cycle. I'm not getting followers because I don't have content. Well, create content, 
you'll start to get followers. What you want to do again at some point, you want to edit your profile at some point, put in a picture, tagline, customize it so that it doesn't look like the generic multicolored homepage that everyone gets when they get a Google Plus account. Now my company's business on Google Plus is google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. We have a presence on Google Plus just like we have a presence on Twitter and Facebook and everything. We've got a name on Google Plus, PMD Interactive. We've got a website, pmdinteractive.com. We're on all the networks and we're using the same name over and over as much as possible. And I'm saying that because you may be thinking about starting to use social media now, but some of these networks have been a while. And unfortunately, some of these networks then, your name is taken. Facebook has been around since 2004. It's been around more than, you know, 12 years. Twitter just celebrated 10 years last month. Twitter's been around a decade. Google Plus has been around since 2011. That's five years now. So some of these networks have been around a while, in an internet time, two years is old, but they've been around a long time, and that means your name might have been taken. So what if I'm PMD Interactive, and I just thought about getting on Google Plus now, and I want to go get my name, it's taken, and then I have to be something like PMD underscore Interactive. And the problem with that is that everyone's going to try to go to PMD Interactive, and it goes to someone else. So whatever the name of your business is, you want to claim it as soon as you can. Uh, so no one else does. And I always tell people, at the least, claim your business name on every network. You may never use it, but maybe one day you want to get into this newfangled thing called Twitter, and it's a good thing you claimed your name before someone else did. Question? Yes. Where did you put the name of the business page to get that? Started. That's what I'm. That's what I'm about to get at. That oh, okay. my business has the nice short name. You guys have gibberish. Okay. Everyone starts off with your unique, uh, your unique serial number or whatever that is. So everyone gets that unique serial number gibberish. No one, it, it rolls off the tongue, right? Eventually, you want something nice like that. Google.com/slash/plus whatever your name. Unfortunately, you cannot choose that custom name in the beginning. You have to create a Google Plus, use it, and I think somewhere in the documentation, I always tell myself I'm going to look it up, but somewhere in the documentation it says something like, you have to have created an account, you have to have put your biographical information, you have to have used it. You have to have a, web a link to a website with the same name. Hmm, okay. Um, which I which I do have here. I did put victorsbakery.com on this thing. I think it's that I think it's that and a couple of other factors, but there are factors that we need to to satisfy before Google will let us have the short name. And in my experience it's been that you've set up the account, you've you've filled in your name and you've filled in a website and you've customized it. You've added content, you've used it, you've been active. You're, you're showing Google Plus, yes, I, I'm serious about using Google Plus. <coughs> Eventually when you log in, you'll get a message at the top that says, pick your custom name now, or claim your custom name. You're not going to see it right away, maybe a couple days, maybe a couple weeks. But eventually it will let you choose your nice short name like that. That's much more memorable. Deep down, every address still has the serial number, but here's our address. That's what we can put on, on a business card or share it easily. Tell, I, mean, I can say that to someone, follow, follow our company on Google+. Plus. Go to google.com slash plus PMD Interactive. Instead of follow us on Google+, Plus. go to plus.google.com slash b slash 11179969399 blah, 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 blah. So everyone gets that weird serial number, but eventually you'll have the custom vanity address. Usually that pops up as soon as you log in and it'll take you over to the edit profile somewhere and then you can claim it. Can't do it just yet, so you'll just have to wait a bit.
from the left menu that was under profile. Let's go look at people or actually any more questions on this screen? Profile. Let's go look at people. Uh, in the people screen is where uh, it shows us our connections. The thing about all social media that we care about, again, is followers, not just for the ego boost, but because that is a captive audience. That is our audience that we want to sell something to, uh, or market, or whatever. In Google+, under people, as we use Google+, it'll start to suggest people to connect with. We can have followers, which are other entities on Google+, that have followed my business. When someone follows me on Google+, that means everything that I post, those people could see, such as that coupon to make that sale. I also have following. My business account can follow other businesses or people on Google+. And as you use Google+, it'll suggest to you, why not connect with these people? This is empty, it doesn't know too much about me, it can't suggest anything. And again, followers is someone has clicked the follow button on my profile, they've chosen to get to see what I post. They've become my captive audience. Following is that I choose, I find someone on Google+, I click the follow button, I want to see what they're posting. I want to see their updates. And everyone will show up here because I can unfollow if I'd like. On Google+, just like every network, you can follow and you can be followed. They might have different names. On Facebook, really, it's that you, that you got a like. When someone liked you on Facebook, it's basically a follow. On Twitter, they call it following. I got followed on Twitter. Google+, same thing. Most networks use the term follow and following, followers and following. Facebook's a little different, it's likes. But the reason that I might want to follow, that my business might want to follow other accounts on Google+, lots of reasons. One is, I'm a bakery, I'm a business, I can choose to search and follow other bakeries, such as, uh, Bakery Abu Majobi, Bakery Group, Bakery on Main, Bakery and Catering Supplies, I could choose to follow them all. The point of my business following another business is for me to see what they're doing, to go about the competition, to see the trends, to keep up to date with things. So when I choose to follow, I will see everything that they're sharing. And I can then Get a little reconnaissance. See what the, see what everyone else is doing. That's into that's a bakery as well. When you follow, of course, that page that enti that entity will get a notification that says Victor's Bakery followed you. So it's up to you to figure out how you want to do this, if at all. Do you want to follow Bakery Saute? Do you want to follow Bakery Chef? Bakery Bazaar, because all of these will get a notification up on their little bell that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. And if you're following your competition, you know, the, the direct competition down on the other side of Main Street, that might be awkward. Part of the reason also to follow, again, is, okay, let's say I follow a bakery on Main, and I'm seeing what are they sharing. Uh, Happy National Superhero Day. Uh, on Maine's very own granola superhero, the Crunch Crusader. Ah, that's a good idea. I didn't know that existed. I'll share something like that. That's the point of you also following other accounts to get inspiration. What are they doing? I never heard of this. I'll put my own spin on it. I, I ran out of something to post this week. Let's look at what else other people posted and get ideas. I'm not saying rip them off. I'm saying look at what they did. Think how you can do it. Put your own spin on it. Like this here. This I can do this easily. I, let's see, I can't draw. But I can do this. I can take a photo of my product on a white table and share it and put my content on it and a link back to my website. I can do that. 
So you get that inspiration from the competition when you follow. And I do recommend, and we do this for our clients. We go in and we go look at, um, we go look at, we go follow comp competitors carefully. Um, maybe not the same competitor in the in the same block or the same city. Maybe a com maybe another bakery in Chicago. We're not in competition with this bakery and in Chicago, so it's okay that I follow them to see what they're doing, so that I can uh, kind of see what they're doing, get ideas. If yes. You, um, follow somebody. Does, do their posts show up on? Oh, good point. They are separate. So notice up here, if I'm in Victor's Bakery right here, whatever I do here does not show up in the other pages, personal or business. So whatever I share, whatever I do on my personal one here, doesn't show up over here. So if I follow something on Victor's Bakery, it will not show up on VMC Inc. Now also, uh, when I follow, the only place it shows up is, is, it, is on the home screen. It doesn't actually show up on my page of Victor's Bakery, on my profile. Only what I create and share shows up on the profile. But what I follow shows up on my home screen, which only I can see. And so all of these accounts are separate that you can create on Google+. They don't overlap. And whoever created the account won't show up by default. Uh, so let, let me show you an example here. I will follow one of these. Um, let's see, bakery group. Let's say any one of these I, I follow, bakery catering supplies. Just uh, I'll just follow any one of them. Um, when I follow, the, the terminology is also known as adding to circles. People in pages <laughs> you add to circles will be notified. Others may see this information publicly. People you add to circles can use Hangouts with you. What that's saying is that when you follow an account, we have a way to organize them into circles, which we'll see in a moment. And when I follow an account, that may show up. It might, it might at least one time say, Victor's Bakery followed Bakery and Catering Supplies. Other people may see that. That is good because the opposite. When someone follows my page, John followed Victor's Bakery. That could show up on John's page. And John's 40 followers see that. John followed Victor's Bakery. So those 40 people, well, why did John's bakery or John follow Victor's Bakery? They come to my account, my bakery, they see my stuff, and then they decide to follow me. So I get more followers, the more people follow me. As I follow accounts, that's also a way to get more followers. I can go in here and start following all of these accounts. Now, don't do this yet. But if I choose to follow all these accounts, some of these accounts will follow me back. Because I'm making all of these accounts aware of my existence. I'm brand new to Google+, Plus. no one knows I exist. None of the 300 million other people know I exist. But once I start to follow accounts, they get a notification. All of those accounts just got a little notification bell up here that said, Victor's Bakery followed you. Now at least five accounts know I exist, and some could follow me back. Yes? So the public looking at your site knows who you follow, but they can see that your po the posts are not showing up on Page. Yes. Yes, they know who I follow, but their stuff doesn't show up on my page. And how do you get around it following competitors? You, you, you can't. If, you, if, if this is my competitor on Main Street and I click follow, they will know. And there's really no way around it. We can kind of go around them in a certain kind of way without a follow, which I'll talk about eventually. But when you do a follow and it popped up to tell you, they will be notified. There's no way to get around that exactly. That's why I'm saying I'm going to follow another bakery in Chicago. We're not in direct competition, but we're both bakers. And so one tactic to get followers is for you 
to follow accounts, but it's not the most effective. Um, I could follow 20 accounts and two might follow me back. You may think that's great or terrible. You might think that's great. I got two new followers. You might take, think that's terrible. I only got two followers. Um, but that's one way. On all the networks, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Pinterest, all of the networks have this mechanism. Your business can follow another business or person, customer, on all the networks. And then they might follow you back. Worst case scenario, John Smith sees the notification that it says Victor's Bakery followed you. Worst case scenario, they just move on with their life. Best case scenario, they click on the button to follow me back. And that's not such a big loss, the worst case scenario, is it? Now when you follow, though, you will see their stuff. When you go to your home screen, you will start to see what they have been posting. That's the point of the follow. I'm going to start to see all of the stuff of the companies that I've followed, the people or companies. That could be a possible detriment why not to go follow crazy. Don't follow a hundred accounts because just because they posted that one thing or you found one thing about baking doesn't mean that's what they're about. They may have shared that one baking post, but everything else is more like hardcore political rants that I might not want to look at. I'm here for the cookies. So when you follow, you're going to see all the stuff on your home screen. Not on your profile, that's different, but on your home screen. And let's say that, okay, actually I didn't really want to uh, follow bakery and catering supplies. So uh, you can always uh, turn off, you can unfollow. Unfollow. They don't get the notification that you unfollowed. They only get the notification that they were followed. So right now, bakery and catering still thinks I followed them. They don't know that I unfollowed. And now that when I followed a few, to, a few accounts and I go back to people, following, I'm following eight accounts. From here then I can unfollow quickly. And so one, one tactic to get followers on social media is you become a follower. You follow some accounts, some will follow you back. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's not the best way to do it. We'll talk about other ways. But what I like about Google Plus is that when you follow, you can then organize uh, these accounts into circles. Circles are like, uh, like folders where you can organize different accounts into different places for the purposes of posting stuff directly to those that would care most. So let's say uh, Victor's Bakery, I'm following a bunch of accounts and, I'm, and I put and I organized some of those accounts into, uh, into a, a circle called uh, uh, gluten-free fans, um, chocolate fans, um, sugar fans, whatever. I organize people into different circles. So when we talk about sharing something on Google+, I can say share this post to the sugar fans circle. And those people are the ones that are going to see what I'm sharing, not the people that are in the sugar-free circle. So you can target your content to specific people by putting them into circles. And you can have one person in more than one circle. Right now, all of these are in my following circle, the big, the big catch-all. But let's say I want to add someone to customers, circle, VIPs, teammates, or make a new circle. So again, just to show you, if I, if I make a new circle here, and I call this one chocolate lovers, <coughs> and I'll call, create another one called uh, strawberry lovers, I can make as many of these as I want. I can name these however I want. And then let's say with, let's say this, this was a person. 
I can put him into the chocolate lover circle in addition to the regular following circle. I can put bakery on main into the strawberry lovers and chocolate lover circle. So now in this circle I've got two people, one here, all of my other eight up there. So I can organize everyone. Here's an example I like to use. Let's say I'm a pet shop and uh, I have lots of connections and I've organized them. Cat lovers, dog lovers, bird lovers. And I'm going to share a coupon. 10% off your next order of cat food. Would the dog people really care about that? Probably not. So when I share that coupon, I can target it so that it goes to the cat lovers circle. Only the people that would be more interested in that particular post, in that particular share, would see would see it if I if I direct it to them. That's the point of the circles. Targeting. And in the real world, <coughs> old school marketers would kill for this. Would want a way for this ad to target this person. In the digital realm of marketing, we have this. We have the ability to target our ad our, our post to specific people. In the real world, that advertisement that's up on that billboard is, tar is going to everyone. And there's a very small amount of people that would really care about it that didn't see it because they didn't drive on that street. Here we can really target it. The good news here is you can make as many circles as you want, put people into as many circles as you want, and the person will not know the name of the circle they get put into. So if you make a circle called Annoying People, and put them in there, they won't know it. They'll just get the notification that says Victor's Bakery followed you. Well, let's show businesses here. <clears throat> Can it also mix in individuals? Yes, let me confirm that. I'm just going to search cookies. I get collections, communities, people, and pages. Let me go to more. These seem to be also businesses. Do this. So let's say Sandra over here. She's a person. Just to check. Uh, she seems to be a regular person. Follow. Yep, so I'm following. You can follow regular people. It seems to sort of guide you when you search. It'll guide you a little bit more toward pages or other businesses. These all seem to be businesses. But notice I, I was able to... So Kemi, she's probably a regular person. And so uh, we journalist. Yeah, so this is a person and, and I've chosen to follow her. So yeah, you can follow regular people too. Go to her in VIP. Sure. Uh, so Ashafan got the email that, uh, I mean not the email, but Ashafan got the uh, notification that I follow her. And now I'm going to start to see all her stuff. So uh, depending on what she's sharing and such. Again, that's the, the thing about following. You're going to see all of their content, uh, which you may or may not. And so that following has a value um, because some might follow you back, uh, but then uh, some might not. So we're going to take a break in just a moment, but uh, we're kind of looking overall in general about the various screens of Google+. We're talking about following and making connections, but as I said, you don't really want to try to forge a lot of connections early on until you have some content to convince people to follow you. All of these that I followed, probably none will follow me back because they're going to look at my profile and say, this is empty, there's nothing here, it's a spammer. So they're not going to follow me. We're going to take a break. We're going to talk about sharing content, and that's more of a bait for people to follow us. <clears throat> it's 7.35, we'll be back at 7.45. We'll take a 10-minute break, then we'll go on.